right, so uh, I'm about to uh, I'm about to expose myself as the fraud I am um, when it comes to symbols uh, with a with a challenge that's probably a little too much for me to take on. But uh, I think nonetheless, showcases kind of in the interesting kind of detective work that you have to do kind of on the fringes of um, looking at symbols and trying to to try to figure out what they are when there's not quite enough information to go on. Uh, so one of my most popular videos is far and above any of the stuff that's like the actual you know musical content that's my own content is a video I threw together about uh, dating vintage Zildjian symbols a few years ago and somebody who watched that video uh, kind of got in touch with me about a mystery symbol that they'd acquired that they thought had the look of, uh, of a vintage Zildjian but was missing the stamp and they just couldn't quite get enough you know sort of points of identification with confidence to to feel like that's what they had and they kind of asked if I'd sort of take a look at what they had so they sent me some pictures and all I have to go on is some pictures here um, and then I my curiosity was piqued and I want to kind of walk you through what I did looking at it um, to to sort of arrive at my own conclusion, a conclusion that I'm not 100% confident of. So let's kind of get right into it and start by looking at what they sent me. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to assess is color. The, the sort of hue, the tone. This is a lot of times what catches my eye. Um, a lot of symbols pass through my hands, and a lot of times I'm buying them online, or I'm, and I'm seeing them in like a either as a Craigslist ad or an online auction, or it's attached to a starter drum set or whatever it is. And it may not be that the person recognizes that it's a, a Zildjian. And it's just these are the symbols that come with this kit. But a lot of times, what will catch my eye is the color, because vintage Zildjians all kind of look the same, or many of them share. A particular hue. The the way that the B20 ages the patina is kind of distinctive. And it, it, I mean, it's it's common to other B20 symbols. Like I can't tell the difference between that and a Peisty just from the the hue. But it's B20. It's it's in that uh, that age that alloy has a color to it. Fortunately for me, this person's passed me a really good comparison sample which is that they sent me a second picture of a different symbol. So they have, I have the unknown symbol on one hand, a 16-inch crash. And then I've got a known Zildjian ride placed on the same objects, taken approximately the same angle, same lighting, same camera, so that I can kind of rule out, you know, the sort of optical effects of different environment and instead say, okay, Side by side, here's here's one that absolutely is a 60s Zildjian. They sent me this second picture to kind of get me to verify that they'd read the stamp correctly. So this is absolutely a 60s Zildjian, and then this one is unknown. Side by side, what do we got? Um, and so in doing that, it's close. It's a little too close to call, but it's also not... I can't rule it in either. I see some things that give me a little bit of hesitation. So the known Zildjian has a little bit of this darker matte feeling to it, which is what I expect. Really tight lathe, uh, which is what I expect. Uh, really regular tight lathe. And the unknown symbol is it shows some it has the effect of, of seeming a little bit lighter in tone, just a little bit. But I'm not sure because it is obviously also, it has some, in other angles, I, I can see that there's some evidence of some hammering, which is not, certainly in an A, I'm not going to expect to see a lot of hammering. I might see on the flip side some very uh, light, sort of regular hammering in, in, in evidence, but not the kind that makes the, 
the top surface of the symbol you know have have its own topography its own unique hammered topography um, this has got some of that rippling which may just be catching the light now different in a, in a different way and reflecting back more light and that's why I think it looks a little lighter but it also makes me think of my initial reaction is it makes me think of certain kinds of very nice generic symbols that are either nickel silver or are uh, brass or some other uh, kind of alloy that's not quite B20 but is by virtue of its composition a little bit lighter in tone. So that's the first thing that I'm seeing is that I'm not 100% sure that its tone is consistent. Now let's talk about lathing. Okay, so the next thing I'm kind of looking at here is, again, and I alluded to this, and it's a little, none of these are like 100%. If there was a stamp, you know, there you go. It, it's just a, an inconsistent Zildjian. But here's something that's not quite consistent. So these uh, Zildjians from this era have, as I mentioned, a really tight, really consistent lathe to them. Like it's, um, it's, it's kind of this beautiful, you know, this beautiful ring system. Um, and when you like step back from it, when I'm looking at this ride symbol, I see, yep, it's this very consistent, very beautiful, um, very tight lathe. When I look at the crash, and this could just be diameter effect. It could just be that, you know, it's a 16 versus a 20, I'm blowing it up a little bit more, but um, I don't think I'm doing that. And I do feel like the lathe is a little wider and it's a little bit, um, I feel like there, there's maybe a little bit of uh, uh, progression across it, that it wobbles a little, just a, just a hair. Um, and so there's another, that's another piece that I have to sort of set aside. It's not enough that I can rule it out but I wonder about it as I look at it. There's something a little bit off about the lip. Maybe I'm talking myself into that, um, but that's something that I'm noticing. Now, um, let's talk about, now other kinds of characters, yeah, it, like I mentioned, it's in the ballpark for sure. Um, now let's talk about a couple other things that I see. So to me, the most difficult thing that I noticed to reconcile back to Zildjian is on the flip side. And I'm really glad that uh, that he sent me the, the back side of the symbol. So on the back side of the symbol, there are, you can see these sort of like, almost like solar flare, cross grain kind of brushing of the metal. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a, not a symbol smith. And so, um, I'm kind of <clears throat> describing it in a, a lay person's way, but I've seen this before, and um, mostly where I've seen this um, is on what I still consider pretty nice vintage symbols that have their own very nice special character um, on like Ludwig Peisty, um, like these nickel silver, um, symbols that would have been like the symbols that came with a, you know, the sort of like the starter symbols, the sort of the B8s of the day, like the, the cheap, you know, beginner symbols, but they're actually really nice. The character of them is really nice. They're just not very durable. Um, I've seen those on, on some of the uh, sort of Ludwig Peisty stuff that's passed through my hands and also on um, this symbol here that I have, and I'll, I'll have to zoom in, but this symbol here, you may or may not be able to see, there's these striations, these brush marks sort of radiating out. Um, and like, there's one here where it's, it's actually so, it's so, actually so deep, there's like a scar on the symbol right here. And you can, yeah, you can just see like this, these 
brush marks as I sort of put it through the light at that angle. Hopefully you can see some of this here. And they're so strong that even as you look at the the top side of the symbol, you can see, yeah, you can see these brush marks that sort of radiate out here, 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 like that. That is not something that I can ever remember seeing on a Zildjian. And I look back sort of through the archives of uh, symbols I've sold, uh, the pictures I've taken of, of vintage Zildjians that I've sold, and I couldn't find an example of one where that was the case. And so because of that, I'm going to have to say that my best guess, well, let's, let's, sum, let's sum up what my, what my conclusion is with the evidence that we've discussed so far, which is imperfect. And I feel, you know, a little bit exposed because I think I could be wrong. But nonetheless, I've kind of reached my conclusion. I'm sure I've kind of telegraphed what it is. Okay, so to summarize, my conclusion is I'm going to, if I'm forced to choose, and I am for the purpose of this video, I don't think that's a Zildjian. I think that it is um, a vintage starter symbol. I think it's probably nicely made. I think it probably sounds nice and smoky. I think it's probably very thin, a nice lightweight symbol. Um, I think it may be made of one of the cheaper alloys. It may be nickel silver or it may be you know, brass, uh, but it's well made. And that's, um, that's something that I think is a little bit prized. It's something that I prize about the symbols from that era. It's the same way I like made in Japan drum sets from that era. They're really well made even though they were like the cheapo kits of, of the time of the day, I had a bunch of these, um, made in Japan, you know, or made in Taiwan sort of stencil kits pass through my hands. And, you know, they're always a little bit of a treat. They're not, you know, as nice as like, they're not as great as like the Slingerland stuff or the Ludwig stuff that I, that I personally really kind of cherish owning, but they are nice. And um, even cheap stuff made back then had a certain kind of elevated craft work to it uh, that I think is, you know, sort of still sets it above. Nonetheless, I think that what we have here is a um, unknown vintage, unknown maker, starter grade symbol that's very well made, very well lathed, and is brushed and hammered to give it some complexity but is nonetheless not a Zildjian where the stamp is just too faded to see. Um, so I'm going to mostly say, I'm going to mostly say that here's my evidence in support of that conclusion is the color seems a little bit off. Um, the lathe seems just a little bit wide. Um, the back side of the symbol shows this, so this sort of flared out extensive, uh, cross grain brushing that I don't have any good evidence to associate with as a as a uh, technique that was in use and you know, by by these you know by Basiljan during that era could stand to be corrected, but I in all the symbols that have passed through my hands cannot find a picture of a Zildjian that has that characteristic. I can find, you know, that characteristic evident on uh, the symbol I just showed you and some other things. So that's where I come down on this one is I, I think that we've got a uh, uh, probably a really nice symbol, probably it sounds great and that has a lot of value and probably, you know, probably does date back and probably has, you know, kind of that missing, you know, it's it's a relic of a, a time long gone where things, things were made a little bit more by hand, a little bit more, uh, with, I don't want to sound like some sort of snob, but with a little, little more attention and care just because that's how manufacturing worked then. Um, and that it probably is a really nice symbol, but I don't think that it's a, I don't think it's a, a Zildjian A. Um, all right. That's my conclusion, and please light up the comments and, and tell me. Yeah, I'd love to have somebody more knowledgeable tell me where I went wrong 
in my detective work here uh, and that and to contradict me and to sort of back it up and that would be great to learn something brand new but this is the kind of thing that I do all the time and trying to assess what I'm going to pay for something what I'm buying what I'm expecting of it what I think it's is going to arrive in my hands uh, so if, if I was looking at this ad online I would I would sort of be hesitant to price it like an A uh, to price it like a vintage A in terms of buying it. Uh, I'd, I'd want to get more of a deal on it because I think it it's an unknown uh, quantity. I think that it's going to have a, a lower ceiling in terms of its ultimate value. All right. There we go.